So welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. And this is um, <clears throat> question number 10 from the October 2023 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P1 paper question about trig graphs. It says figure four shows a sketch of a part of the curve C1, which has the equation y equals three times cosine of x over n degrees, where x is greater than or equal to zero. It says where n is a constant hidden behind the watermark there. It says the curve C1 cuts the positive x-axis for the first time at the point 27, uh, sorry, 270, 0. Just over here, as shown in figure 4. State the value of n and state the period of C1. Okay, so here we have the cosine curve and transformation of it. So the first thing you should try to do is think about what does actually the parent function, which is y equals cosine x, without any transformation, what does that look like? That's the first thing we should do. We should all know how to sketch the graph of the basic cosine or co basic functions. The cosine curve starts from 0, 1. It goes through 90 degrees at 0. At 180 degrees, it goes to minus 1. At 270, back to 0. And at 360, back to positive 1. So it goes something like this. That's how the cosine curve looks, without any transformations. All right. So this would represent the origin of, of P. Okay. The the what P was before it was transformed. Okay. So if we think about um, first of all this equation, you have three of y equals three times cosine of you can think of it as one over n times x. So in terms of the original function. It's like three times the function, okay, and you have um, replaced the x with one over nx, okay. So now, what happened here? So the three only affects the y coordinates. They're asking about the value of n, which is something which will only affect the x coordinate, and the value, the period, the period of how often it repeats. So we're not really concerned about the three, okay. Although that would make this become three. The highest point and the lowest point minus three so vertical stretch of factor three that's what that would happen but what we're concerned about is what's inside the function okay and one over nx is basically one over n f one over nx okay represents a horizontal stretch horizontal stretch okay it's a stretch of scale factor three okay of scale factor I put three of scale factor n, not three, sorry, three was for that. Scale factor n, okay, of scale factor n. All right, so basically the the x coordinates are multiplied by n. So the x coordinates are multiplied by n. Okay, so the point here, which is the x coordinate of p, it said x coordinate of the original p is 90. That's multiplied by n, and it gave us, as I said, 270. So n is equal to 270 divided by 90, which is 3 as well. Okay, so n is equal to 3. So in part 1, we can say n is equal to 3. The, it's got, you know, it's f one third x, which is a stretch factor of 3. Okay, so n is equal to 3. And the period of the function, part 2, Okay, the period of the period of the normal function, the period of cosine x of y equals cosine x would be 360 degrees. It repeats every 360 degrees. Of y equals cosine x is 360 degrees. So therefore, the period of y equals three times the cosine of this is now going to be basically one third x is basically 360 multiplied by 3, which is 900 plus 180, which is 1080 degrees. So there's the answer to that, and there's the answer to part 1. Okay, n equals 3, and the period of the function is 1080 degrees, three times a normal uh, period because it's stretched by a factor of 3 because it's 1 over 3 as the, you know, that's one third x inside the function, which is a horizontal stretch of the re reciprocal of one third, which is 3. 
So there's part A. Pretty simple, really, this question, if you know what the original sine, cosine curve looks like. Now, part B says the point Q shown in figure 4 is a minimum point of Q, um, a minimum point of C1. State the coordinates of Q. So let's think about the original place where Q would be. The original place where Q would be according to our cosine curve. Okay, so you would have your cosine curve. That's the first time it reaches its minimum. Then it goes up, that's 360 degrees. Then that's the second time it reaches its minimum. So this is like where Q dash would be. That would be the original for Y equals cosine X. So where would that be? Well, we know that this point here is 180 degrees. And this is basically the period of the normal curve is 360. So it's, three, it's going to be 180 plus 360. So 180 plus 360. Okay. And then um, because... We have to multiply the x coordinate by 3 for the, this function. We're going to multiply it by 3 to give us q. So this is q dash and this is q. q, the x coordinate of q is going to be 180 plus 360 and then multiplied by 3. So um, 180 plus 360. Okay, and then multiplied by 3. That gives us 1620. So we can say the coordinates of, of Q are 1620 for the X and the Y coordinate is going to be, as we mentioned, because it's 3, this is going to be positive 3. This is going to be negative 3 because it's a vertical stretch of factor 3. So it's going to be negative 3. Okay, so that's the, um, the, the coordinates of Q. Okay, did we have to write coordinates here as well or just the value? No, the value of N period of C1, that's fine here. Coordinates, you've got to write the X and Y coordinates. So there's the answer to part B. Now part C, it says here, the curve C2, which is a different curve now, has equation y equals 2 sine x degrees plus k, where k is a constant. The point R A 1215 and the point S minus A minus 3 fifths both lie on the curve C. C2, find, given that A is a constant less than 90, find the value of k. All right, so now what we can say here is if I, if I take the points A and 12 over 5, and I take the point minus a and negative 3 over 5. And I substitute them into this equation. This is like the, the x value. This is like the y value. So I'll have um, 2 sine of a plus k. And that's going to give me the y value 12 over 5. And if I put here 2 sine of negative a plus k, that's going to give me minus 3 fifths. All right, now, what I should understand, very important, that the sine of negative A is the same as negative sine of A. That's very important for us to understand. From the sine curve, okay, if you think about the sine curve, it goes something like this. So if this is A and this is negative A, the value of sine A will be the same magnitude but the opposite sign um, than the value of, ne of a sine of negative A. So, for example, the sine of 30 will give you a half. The sine of minus 30 will give you negative a half. Right? So, what I can do is I can rewrite this as minus 2 sine of A plus K equals minus 3 fifth. Okay, si 2 sine minus A is the same as saying minus 2 sine A. So, I have these two equations. So, I have uh, 2 sine of A plus K equals 12 over 5. And I have minus 2 sine of a plus k equals negative three-fifths. So these two equations now, if I add them together, the sine a will disappear. We just want to find what k is. So if we add them together, if I do equation one plus equation two, these two will disappear, and I'll be left with 2k equals, I'm adding them, so it's 12 plus minus three, which is minus plus nine over five. So therefore, k is going to be divided by two, nine over 10. And there's the answer to that question. Now, it's a pretty simple question. It looks a bit complicated at first sight, but actually it's a really simple question. All right, but the key is to understand this principle, which is very important for us. And this is something that you should really see from the sine curve. So when you study the trig curves, you should look at this kind of um, relationship. We, for the cosine curve, it's, it's kind of like um, symmetrical about, cosine curve looks like this. 
about the y-axis. So you can say the, the cosine of minus a and the cosine of a gives you the same thing. So the cosine of minus a will be the same thing as the cosine of a. So the cosine of minus 60 is the same value as the cosine of 60. Okay. And um, when you go into uh, P2, you get more detail of this, but we should have this basic understanding. All right. Sine minus a equals minus sine a and cosine of minus a equals the same as cosine a. That will help us with certain questions like this one. All right, so that's the end of this question. Other questions from this particular paper can be found on the playlist that will appear in this part of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions dealing with trig graphs and from P1 um, will be found in the playlist that will be appearing in this area of the uh, screen. And you can subscribe to this channel by clicking on the link over here. And you can watch a video if you click the link there that will tell you how to use my channel to find things you might be looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.